Good and um, welcome everyone to the Bennington School District Board of Directors meeting. I'm Superintendent Jim Kalkeen. We're reorganizing tonight, so I will open the meeting. And then once we elect a new chair, I will turn over the meeting to the chair. So first agenda item is uh, citizens' comments. Are there any citizen comments? Seeing none, I will close that section. This is posted as a special meeting tonight. Why that is, is this is not the night that we would regularly schedule the BSD Board of Directors meeting. That is always the first Wednesday of the month. But there are two action items that we wanted to take care of before that first Wednesday in April. One is to, uh, Jackie Prue is the one who kept reminding me this. Thank you, Jackie. We needed to, um, elect representatives, particularly to the uh, SVSU board, which will be meeting next week, which you need to, you wouldn't have any representatives for that meeting <coughs> next week if we waited to April. And we also want to uh, move on the nomination of hiring the new principal for Bennington Elementary School. Um, we want to get that done as quickly as possible. So that's how we're walking in here. <laughs> All right, so we'll go on to reorganization. So at this time, nominations are in order for the chair of the Bennington School District Incorporated Board of Directors. Do I have any nominations? I nominate Christopher Murphy. I nominate Jackie Kelly. Okay, let's, do I have a second for Chris Murphy? I'll second that nomination for Chris Murphy. Okay, and I have a nomination for Jackie Kelly. Do I have a second for the nomination of Jackie Kelly? Okay. Are there any other nominations for the chair? No, seeing none, I will close those nominations. Um, okay, so we have Christopher Murphy nominated to be the chair of the Bennington School District. All in favor? Raise yeah. your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, well, no need to add some unanimous, no need to ask if there's any opposed. So um, I'll hand this form to you, and you can handle the rest of the nominations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, so nominations are in order for the vice chair for the BSD. Are there any nominations for the vice chair? I nominate Chela Sakura for vice chair. I'll second. Sec I'll second that. Thank you, Mary. Any other nominations for vice chair for the BSD? Hearing none, do you wish to elect by acclamation? All in favor? Raise your hand, please. Congratulations, <laughs> <laughs> Quick menu act. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so I hereby announce Shayla Sikora as vice chair of the board. Congratulations, Shayla. Thank you. So nominations are in order for the clerk of the Bennington School District Incorporated Board of Directors. Are there any nominations for clerk? It's a very popular position. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make Jackie Kelly. I declined. <laughs> so perhaps we could turn to the superintendent for some guidance on this. When, uh, when an elected office has no nominees, how is that generally handled? So we simply elect George because he's not here to. It <laughs> 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 wouldn't be great. the first time that he's asked that. You could, and if he declines it when he comes, or you, you know, you you could leave it open for the time being too. Um, it's not as critical as the chair and vice chair at, at this point because you do have your minutes are still mm -hmm. being taken. The clerk does not do those, but they other correspondence that this board might do, like letters of congratulations and things like that, the clerk, those roles tend to fall on the, on the clerk on behalf of the board to write, say, someone's retirement letter or something like that. So not as time critical as having someone to run your meetings or your first suggestion could also work. <laughs> I think we'll hold off. Maybe we won't, uh, we won't stick George quite at this point. But, uh, so we'll t unless there are any objections, we'll table that nomination uh, to our next board meeting. All right, very good. So, moving on from there. <clears throat> so, no, nominations are in order for representatives of the SBSU Board of Directors. And I believe maybe two 
rep we, do, we need two representatives for the SVSU Board of Directors. Uh, there's also an alternate that will move there in the moment. Um, are there any nominations for the SVSU reps? I nominate Christopher Murphy. I'll second that nomination. Thank you. We do need another nomination for the SVSU. I'll nominate uh, Chela Sikora. And I would second that. Any other nominations? So the two nominees. Mm -hmm. Two nominees, yes. Two nominees, yes. <laughs> All right. So we so the two nominees at this point for the SVSU reps are Chael Sikora and myself. Are there any, any other nominations? All right. So hearing none. Uh, do we have a, a, a vote to vote for, for both Chael and myself, please? Signify by raising your hand. Any opposed? Very good. So, I hereby announce that Shayla Sakura and Chris Murphy are the BSD reps to the SVSU. It's a good thing you got this cheat sheet here. <laughs> <laughs> so, nominations are in order for an SVSU board no. alternate. So, in the event that either Shayla or myself is unable to make a meeting, we need an alternate. So, are there any nominations for that, please? I nominate Meredith Capella. As the alternate? Yeah. I'll second that nomination. Very good. Merity accepts. Are there any other nominations? <coughs> okay. So hearing none, the nominations are closed. Uh, please vote uh, in the affirmative by raising your hand, please. That's unanimous. Very good. Thank you, Merity. So the following appointments need to be made, please, for committee assignments. Um, there are policy, food service, technology, teacher negotiations, ESP negotiations, administrator negotiations. Um, and although it's not listed here, Jim, could you please weigh in? Um, does the facilities, um, does the chair of the facilities committee need to be appointed tonight as well? No, my understanding of how this works is you're not actually not the chair appoints who they want to be on the rest of those committees so um you some chairs do it tonight some ask anybody who wishes to serve in those to email you and then you can announce your decisions at the april meeting if that would be easier if there's more than one or you are also you are the chair you're also free to do it tonight if you want to if if it's clear who wants to serve on those committees but um, yeah. no, I want to make a recommendation yes, that you leave Jackie and I on um, teachers and ESP since we're almost Finished. ninety percent through them, mm -hmm. and it you know just okay until it finished. I, I think I'll take um, Jim's first recommendation too. If for those of you who are interested in serving on committees, um, please let me know via email. Um, the the email address that we've all been circulated on through Mary Lee uh, works for me. And uh, I think I have a general sense of, of who I think would be good in those positions, but let's let's keep it open for anyone who has that interest. So folks who just let me know, maybe in the next two weeks we can announce it at the April meeting. And I'll probably let folks know ahead of that as well, but uh, we'll make it official at the April meeting. Yeah. Uh, you had questioned, and, and I, I don't know if Jim had, had answered, there is a facilities committee as well? Yes, there okay. is. Yeah. Okay. And just I understand that. that. Just, yeah. So again, just, just so folks can hear it, um, the, the committee assignments, the committees are, Policy, food service, technology, teacher negotiations, ESP negotiations, administrator negotiations, and facilities. So, so a mil you might not need to do administrative negotiations. That contract with the principals isn't up for at least another year. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And technology is not a committee that uh, meets with regularity. So. Um, <coughs> just those two footnotes, though, let you know. So I see, Jen. Uh, thank you for that. I see. Um, on this particular sheet, it says technology as according to the SVSU plan. Could you explain that, please? It, the technology is a so you wouldn't have your own technology committee. It would be somebody who would be a representative on the SVSU technology I committee. See, okay, thanks. But as an example, you do have your own BSD specific facility committee because the buildings are the property of this district where technology is a service that you receive through the SU. Thank you. All right, so if is there any other business with regard to reorganization of the board or appointment to committees? 
All right, very good. So we then move on to the presentation of the Bennington Elementary School. Uh, I have a question. What about, what about the Act 46? So it's my understanding the Act 46 committee appointees or representatives need to be voted in after the SU, the SBSU. Well, it again, it's it's not on your agenda, and this is a special meeting, so we have to be careful what we do. So I would recommend that we put it on the agenda for your regularly scheduled meeting to elect your representatives to, oh, you have to do two votes. First, you have to vote whether you want to join the Act 46 right. Formal Study Committee, and then the second vote is who your representatives will be. That's mm -hmm. not an appointed, that is, you, you have to vote who it is for the, uh, the guidelines given to us by the state. So do it at your regular scheduled meeting. <coughs> there won't be a meeting of the uh, SVSU Formal uh, study committee before your April meeting. I would think that. Yeah. Yeah. Do we know, Jim, or anyone else yeah. for that matter, do we have a sense as to how many other schools have vo already voted to be part of the formal study committee at this point? Um, Shaftesbury. Shaftesbury, whether Pownell, it's on Pownell's agenda tonight for their regular meeting. Um, <coughs> uh, North Bennington North tabled it. And, um, and it was on the agenda for MAU last night, but we got a ruling from our attorney that MAU doesn't have a voting representative to that, because they, they are represented by their individual school districts that send to MAU. So those are the only meetings so far. So, so we're waiting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, question, how many representatives from BSD will there be? Uh, what did you have last time? Four. 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 Yeah. So Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. No, wait a minute. Or was it three? three. It was <laughs> three. No, <laughs> no. We had me, George, um, we had the two ladies, mm. and Don, Dan, Campbell. All right. So we're not Don. doing the, the Don. SU Don. voted <laughs> to do, <laughs> see it to, different to ask for today. members to join, but not the community members at this time. So it's just board members. So um, <coughs> I'll have to. You'll let us. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll get back to you on what that original configuration was. Bennington. Uh, then it was three. Three. Okay. Because I think it was three because if we do four, then that's a quorum of your committee. Okay. It yeah. was three. <laughs> it was three <laughs> when so we didn't have it. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was me, George, and Ken when we first started mm -hmm. as a formal mm -hmm. study committee. Then when we decided to um, bring in the community, it changed. Yeah. Everyone got a community member equal to how many oh, board okay. members they had on the committee. So doubled it. Okay, gotcha. uh, so any other business with the reorganization of the board? Okay. Then Jim, I'd like to turn it over to you, please, to right. introduce our uh, principal panels. So at this time, um, let me talk about before I introduce Edie Dunn, uh, who I hope will be the next principal of Bennington elementary school. Uh, the process that we use, there is a policy in the SVSU that we form a study, I mean, screening committee, a uh, search committee, that I meet with the board chair and form the committee. And their job is to go through the applications and decide who meets the qualifications that were posted and schedule interviews. So they do the paper screening. They schedule the first round of interviews. Uh, then uh, I interview them, and then Edie is here before you tonight. Vermont stature um, gives the, the superintendent's responsibility in this is to make a recommendation to the board for the board to vote uh, either yes or no. And um, I hope, it, of course, it will be yes. But before we um, <clears throat> do that, we certainly want the board to have an opportunity to hear from Edie, and um, she's been instructed to, to be ready to talk tonight, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sure she will. I have, you got her resume, I hope you all got her resume earlier in advance. Uh, we're very pleased that somebody with her level of experience as a principal is coming to Bennington. Um, as you know, we, we did two rounds of this search, our first round, um, didn't produce a candidate. We had put in our, um, the, one of the biggest requirements we are looking for is somebody with proven principal experience, and we believe we have a candidate here tonight that certainly meets that. And um, 
So with that, Edie, why don't you, you're going to come here and sit at my seat. <laughs> so rather than uh, you stand up. And Edie's going to give us a little bio and background rather than me repeat it to you. And, um, and then feel free to ask questions. Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for um, meeting with me tonight. It was quite a drive coming up. It was great to have some sunshine and clear roads after two days of snow. So I know that um, you probably are really interested in me in, in like, what are you doing here and, and why are you interested in Bennington? And I think the best way to, um, to really share that is to share a little bit of myself. I am a, um, was a military dependent, grew up doing lots of moving and traveling. And I'm really appreciative to um, my dad for that because from that life work of traveling and um, having to adjust to lots of different places and things, I became very resilient. I also learned that there's so much out there to do, to experience, and to know. So as you look at my resume, you can see that movement was always moving forward, that I leave a place in a good place to move forward. And I think coming from Hardwick Elementary, was really a great um, training ground for Bennington. Even though it's a smaller school in many ways and it's rural, as you're not, I don't know what to call Bennington. It's, it's a town, but it looks very rural. It almost looks suburban. And uh, we also have high poverty, high challenges with special education, um, challenges with students with behavior needs, challenges with students from trauma. And in working through those these past couple of years, uh, it's been absolutely an incredible, um, exciting adventure. And I think one of the um, folks on the interview committee, or the search committee, um, mentioned a letter that I had posted back in December when I decided that I needed to find new territory to bring my talents and skills. And in that letter, I address the fact that I'm leaving Hardwick in a really good place. Um, some of the programs that we started, some of the uh, professional development, I feel really, really, um, it's, it's a bittersweet kind of thing. But I know that my work, I call my work as a principal really um, sort of a calling. I'm very, I'm very privileged to be able to say that. I wouldn't be doing this work if I didn't um, feel that way. So I think Bennington, offers really some great challenges. I will tell you honestly, if I were to receive this position, it would be the most difficult and challenging work probably that I've ever done. But I think in looking at what, what you have and this principal who's been here for a great time and really dedicated himself to this, this school, um, it looks like there's a lot of work to do um, to kind of resurrect some energy and some uh, staff efficacy, um, and I'm probably just touching the surface of all of the kinds of challenges ahead. It is um, extremely um, important, I think, that you looked at a candidate who has um, experience. This would be a terribly challenging job for, for someone new. So I think the experience that I've um, been able to share over time, with Hardwick in particular, um, really sets me up in, in a good place to do good work for you. So that's, that's really why I'm here. Do, do you have some specific questions about my work or my... I have some questions. Okay. I don't want to step on anyone's toes. Please. Um, my name is Mary Capella. I am back on the board. Uh -huh. I have been on previously and I was on a hiring committee for a principal. So um, I just want to say, for starters, thank you very much for considering Bennington and, and joining us and <clears throat> helping us move forward. I really, really appreciate that, and our children will really appreciate it. Um, I was reviewing your resume, and you are incredibly qualified for the position, but I have some questions that are probably redundant that the hiring sure. committee may have asked you, but I was not it, so I didn't have a chance to. <laughs> Um, firstly, um, Donna and I have worked closely on a program in our community, and I've worked with Dr. Mugitz, but Donna's actually at my table for CI3T. 
And I was really thrilled to see on your resume that you have PBIS experience. Yes. And I went on the Hardwick Elementary website today to see that you're, you're utilizing it in a very similar way that our district is, and I thought that was just such a leg up because now we have rolled out CI3T this year, which has been like the baby that everybody has really been cuddling and loving and trying to keep moving it forward to get all of our um, staff on board. And it's, and it's been a, a big work in progress, and it's, it's a live animal that's just going to keep <laughs> changing. <laughs> live as, document. Yeah, it's, it's, absolutely. It's You're right. It's going to keep changing as we go, and, and it's, it's pretty amazing. Change. But I was so happy to see that you already have the PBIS experience, which is a huge piece for us. Yes. Um, Challenger Growth, you already spoke to that. Um, Hardwick. I'm familiar with Hardwick. You are. I am. Um, tiny town. <coughs> Very rural. Yes. How are they going to be without you? <laughs> That's a very tough uh, question. That's a loaded I, question. How am I going to be without we them? Want you, so, but I'm asking, how are, what, the, are they going to be okay without you? Are they in a position that you really feel that they're going to be okay? And Because we want to use you, of course, but what do you think? Hard I wages? think I, I, I know that everybody is dispensable. I mean, you have to you have to go with that attitude that, of course, I've done great work. I'm going to, to miss being there. The students, um, um, I told right up front, there are a number of qualified candidates that they're interviewing. There is a, um, a teacher leader staff group that would lead this new person um, forward. Mm -hmm. There is a, a just as uh, in this case here, you have some members, new board members. Uh, last night, that's what we did. We signed in three new board members. There, mm -hmm. There's new um, leadership over at central office. So the timing is really okay. um, incredibly perfect. Yeah, it was a loaded question. Yeah. So yeah. No, and, <laughs> and, and because, you know, as a parent, I'm concerned about those kids as much as I'm yes. concerned about my own, yes. that they're left in good hands. Thank so oh, that's really nice. My last question speaks to your um, time at East Greenwich. Mm -hmm. um, our community has expressed concern that our talented and gifted population are often overshadowed by our special ed population. Um, do you feel poised to have the ability to have a balance of equity and opportunity for our school as well? Because while we do have a, a large SPED population, we do have a large population of children that are not special education and, and so I can tell you honestly that that was a a goal that we set at Hardwick and I, I'm sorry that I'm looking back and forth here um, to really <laughs> look at that piece mm -hmm. and my greatest regret is that as a principal with a lot of other challenges I couldn't do more in doing it myself um, it was incredibly and remains incredibly difficult to do that. We had pockets of times when I was able to get yeah. some of our um, itinerant teachers to serve in that role. Yeah. And that changed because they were paid out of a grant and so those positions then left. I think it's incredibly important and probably possible to give those high-end learners more attention with the proficiency-based learning agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I think that students, as, as you work through, I guess, the structures within a building and an SU to build that, you can say we have students who can move on and not have to wait. We have students who can engage in other mm -hmm. um, kinds of learning activities. So I think that that's going to be the road. And I think if that's something that this board and this staff and this community wants, then we have to look at it very closely and say, how would we do that? And you're right, what happens is your energies, your resources yes. um, tend to be uh, yeah. drained. You More say, focused. how are we gonna do this? You put out the bigger fires yeah. first and then the ones that aren't creating a, a problem. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Tread water. But I think it's great that you've acknowledged as a board um, that that's, that's got to happen. I think it's more of a community. We haven't really mm -hmm. talked as a board much. Okay. This is the first time we've come together <laughs> as a community. As a board <laughs> since our vote. But I'm all I'm it done. Is a My questions concern. are done. Yes. Yes, because it's a diverse community. And the equity piece is I mean, equity is really at the center of all of public education. And so we use that word, but then you have to prove it with with programming. Right.
and instruction. So that would be a big, that would be a, a wonderful goal to set um, for this school. It, it, it may already be a goal. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. I have to assume that mm -hmm. yeah. the best education is always the goal, but yes. I'm not sure how they have that laid out at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting that you brought up the, the East Greenwich experience was um, the easiest principalship. I had over 400 students as one of my larger schools because students came, the majority of students came to school already ready to learn. Sure. It's the, the challenge was really meeting parent um, challenges for, for um, exceptional um, programming, we did, and we did do a lot of that. So that experience still stays um, fresh in my mind about what, what we could do. Right. Thank you. Who else had a question over here? So, Edie, my name is Chris Murphy. Chris, are you the chair now? Apparently, yes. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so here in Bennington, we have uh, our, our district is comprised of three elementary schools. Mm -hmm. And of course, each principal has his or her own school that they're responsible for. But all three is also part of the larger community of learners here in Bennington. So I'm just wondering if you can chat a little bit about um, either your experience in working in a similar system of multiple elementary schools in one district. Um, and also, ideally, how you would like this partnership with our other two principals to look like. Until I came to Vermont, that was really the system that I worked in. Um, ten schools were one district led by one board. I know that's kind of scary here because of uh, Act 46. But uh, the idea of working cooperatively or collaboratively with other schools was just part of what you did. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that that's really one of my strengths is um, sort of leading the leadership piece, at least in terms of um, what are you doing? I reach out to colleagues and I'll say, here's what we're doing now. So I think it's a really important piece of how you develop your school. Is look, actually I went on the website and um, shared with some of my teachers during our snow days, um, <laughs> some of what's happening with your CVTV um, at Pownall and um, Molly Stark has the uh, the, the yeah, outdoor yeah, ed, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. which was so wonderful. That tour was great. So what was different is a lot of schools have those pieces, but it was great to see that you were advertising them in such a visual way that would connect with folks. So I thought that was really great that, that you share that. Um, what was the other part of that question? Well, so you just spoke about your yeah. experience in, in working collaboratively with other schools, but how would you envision the partnership between the three principals looking like? Like a partnership okay. that shares the strengths and the, of, of each of those schools, and probably in the position of, of um, new principal of this school, really getting to know what works, well, um, I think the, the new principal here would really need to take a lot of information <coughs> from the other schools because they've been around and they've had leadership for a while. And I think the community, how do things <coughs> work in this school community? And the idea of three schools together to me is very exciting. I think working in isolation is, I mean, Harder. principals already work in isolation, <laughs> as do teachers, but to work in isolation um, as a new person in running a school. And I have to tell you that during the, um, the interview process, one of the pieces that Donna shared with me, which I thought was just really something that highlights your um, SU, is don't forget, you don't have to go finding all the information yourself. You have a leadership team. And I really have never had that, that opportunity. In um, the OSSU, we have a leadership team and we have six different schools, but I can't say that we work collaboratively. Um, I'd like to see us do more of that, but it's a little bit more competitive <laughs> than that. So I think the fact that you already have that um, structure in place is an exciting thing. I think, it, I think it's incredibly exciting. Thanks. Um, I'm wondering if you could also please speak to what could we expect to see from you in terms of engaging parents, the parents of your students? What would that look like with you as principal? So the first time I went on your website, I saw that um, it said our parents or our parent group, but there weren't any names listed. I don't know. At Ben 
Yes, yes, okay. at Ben L. There, there were no parents <clears throat> listed. There's so, very few. So finding out how, and we've talked a little bit about this during our, our interview process also, um, what works in this community or what has worked before? Uh, how do you get parents in and how do school folks get out? And I think that that's really a critical piece of finding out um, before you say, why don't we do this? It would be, what have you done that really works? Mm -hmm. And I think the other schools who are maybe more successful, what are they doing? And a lot of parent involvement has to do with either one or family involvement. Trust, trust in the system or trust in schools, and success that when you get involved that you're actually going to be involved. I've had a lot of experience um, with folks who have signed up to volunteer and then nobody calls them. So it's really important that you put a structure in that, that involves them. And as uh, I think also being part of what happens in the, in the community, sports, um, whatever celebrations happen, that's easier said than done, but I can tell you that the good news is my boys, <laughs> I have three sons, two live in Denver and one lives in DC. So um, I obviously travel to visit them, but certainly not uh, weekly. So my school children become really my hub. Mm -hmm. Does that answer it, so. your question? I think so, thank you. Who's new here? Uh, this, <clears throat> okay, the four of you were new. And we have one that couldn't make it this okay. evening. Wow, that's exciting. Meredith's back for a second. I'm back for a second, second round. round. <laughs> I, I was on from 09 to 11, <laughs> so it's been a few years. So I'm, um, I'm excited to be here. I'm looking ahead, depending on how the vote goes, to, um, to just wondering, you know, where to get started if, if I were to be the candidate. And really spending a lot of time um, actually contacting families, contacting staff, trying to, trying to get as much information, not doing anything per se in the beginning, but just really trying to find out where is everybody and what needs to happen. That was going to be one of my questions, yeah. but I'm assuming it was asked in the interview process as well, mm -hmm. what does your first 90 days, days. look like? Yeah. You it's a little, typical interview uh, question. Yeah. She, she, had so, to write, she had to write a letter about that. Yes, I did. In 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's, I, cool. that's tough. No pressure. <laughs> Some of them were good. Yeah. So I did share, um, and I think it's a practice that I would try to do again. Um, and I'm still confused about the pre-K. The pre-K is housed somewhere else, not in this school, correct? Right. Oh, right. start. But second. contacting um, by phone um, over the summer, you know, um, just trying to make contact, uh, maybe some other kinds of things that work. Once again, when I when I drive up to this school, first of all, I parked way over there because it, I, where does everyone park? And then I learned <laughs> that, what is that street on this side? School, school Street. School, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, school Street is really the front street, right? This is the front mm -hmm. and that's where people park. But um, it's, it's really difficult for me to get a sense. I've only come here twice, but where is everybody? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a very um, kind of secluded physical space. Mm -hmm. so, so I would be working on trying to get in touch with families and, and students in particular. I think this will be big for them. They've had Mr. Law for 11 years. Mm -hmm. So many of them you know, have since pre-K all the way up, mm -hmm. kindergarten anyway. What would you suggest would be something that you think would work? I mean, I, exactly. I think the outreach um, program, too. I know, um, you know, possibly attending some, you know, end of year um, mm -hmm. celebrations that mm -hmm. might be occurring, whether it's the fifth grade graduation or I know it like, at Molly, we have you know celebrations at the end of the year. I'm sure Ben does something similar. So just kind of making yourself present and and beginning the introductions, Accessible. yeah, at that point, um, so that at the beginning of the year, it's not it's not new anymore. It's mm -hmm. oh yeah, we're all ready to go. So um, I think that's always beneficial. Well, one of the hardships you're going to have to endure this summer 
is not being able to get in the building. And unfortunately, wait a minute, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't tell Seriously? you. Seriously? Yes, there's some <laughs> renovations. Oh. Energy efficiency upgrades. Yes. yes. For all three, we all are three looking schools. at this wing of the building, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I know that actually the building that I would be leaving is having the same thing, so the secretary is moving yeah. into yeah. the to the library, but. Um, and because of it, we won't be having any summer programming. Oh, either that's because tough. The, yeah, because the buildings are going to be occupied with workers. What did I read in the in the Bennington banner? Something about um, YMCA. YMCA. Mm -hmm. Yes, that yeah. collaboration, and it, that's something that sounds really exciting. It is very and a long really time good. coming, mm -hmm. and it's I'm um, going to take that idea back to what to Hardwick because the same kind of challenge there. Yeah. No community center. Yeah. Nothing for anyone for the students. Things mean, for children to do yeah. in their downtown. Yeah, th three years ago, we really worked hard on keeping a summer program because, I, particularly me, I, I felt it was very, very important to to every child in this because if you don't keep them busy, they do other things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> true, <laughs> very true. And plus, the, you know, learning goes down. Yeah. So, how does the staff feel about um, not having access? You'd have Do you to know? Ask. You'd I have was led to, to believe that we were going to be headquartered in Hawaii for the summer. <laughs> 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 it's an outreach. I'm going to Aruba. <laughs> <laughs> Our staff is going to Aruba. <laughs> wow, this, this is not so ideal. No, it's not ideal. That everyone understands that it is going to be a very Huge. different yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. It, but it, it just summer. really has to happen. And it also could impact. The opening of school too. That's something that we all yeah. understand, and you know, we'll we'll know better um, um, by by August first. We might have a better idea where that's going to be. Yeah. I've never seen a construction project done on time. Done on time. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it was done on time, we still need team time to put technology back in the building, clean the building, and give teachers time to set up their classrooms. Yeah. And. The, uh, at the end of the year is be something that we'll be discussing at the next at your April meeting about what our plans are, which we thought were pretty solid until we had two snow days this week. Yeah, <laughs> so. well, and, was... and if I may add, the staff has been actually positive about it. Good. We know that this is a good thing yeah. for our the physical sense of the mm -hmm. building, yes. um, and then um, you know just coming back knowing that we've upgraded things and our climate literally mm -hmm. in our um, schools will be much better so I haven't heard anything negative I think that staff is ready um, and I also think that the superintendent is thinking very clearly about preparing for us to be able to pack and um, and my custodians got fashioned his uh, great hard hat the other day so he's all set <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that while clearly being a new principal you, you really want to be in the building and become immersed in the building and learn about the building. But on the flip side of that is also being a new principal by not being in the building, not being held hostage in the building, you're, um, you have more opportunity to interact with other administrators and get a, a, a full context for the district. But it's, mm -hmm. it's so easy to weigh yourself down behind the desk trying to sift through a mountain of data and if anything else it prompts that opportunity to interact with other mm -hmm. um, school leaders that uh, will not similarly be entrenched in their offices either so mm -hmm. I would prefer to see that as a benefit. Mm -hmm. So you, That's I, a great benefit. I, I hope it, you know, the Lord acts quickly and makes you present. <clears throat> This part of the building is not part of the construction zone. So depending on what can happen in technology, you may find that your office will be here so you would be in the building. These two people may be spending their summer over at central office with me. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't have all those details yet as we get more construction yeah. updates. Uh, and as part of Mike's building that is the what is known as the castle, is not part of the construction zone. He probably could make his office out there, 
but the castle building is in the middle of the construction zone, so <laughs> access to and from becomes an issue. And last meeting I had with the contractors, Donna's building is pretty much off limits. So. Going to Aruba. <laughs> so we're talking um, Molly Stark and Monument. Monument. Okay, mm -hmm. those are the partner schools. That, yes. And I'm really getting a sense tonight of how partner it is, and I, so that, and that really does explain yeah. your question. I think that's very exciting. And, and if you do vote to accept my nomination this evening, Edie has a morning plant here in Bennington where she will be meeting with the principals Great. and touring the other facilities. We have a, a schedule yeah. planned yeah. out for yeah. that. Thank you. I hope you will. I want you to make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a motion yeah. to approve this Edie Dunn to be our next principal. For I'd like to second, second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Is there a first and a second? Uh, I'm presuming you will accept I that. I am nomination. pleased and honored to be um, invited to accept that. Okay. So all those in favor, please raise your hand. I don't see any opposed. Congratulations. Congratulations. So much. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Now you make it really easy to have a conversation, I must say. So, a lot of hard work ahead, and I hope to um, really fulfill your expectations. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Got the chair all warm. Thanks so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Jim, what is the morning schedule? I have it right here. From 8 to 8.45. She'll be here at Bennington Elementary School, school touring Ben L with Jim Law. From 9 to 9.30, she'll be at central office meeting with HR to review paperwork. <laughs> uh, 9.45, she is going to Molly Stark to meet with Principal Mike Mugat and Donna Colley and tour that building. So 9.45 to 10.45. And then from 11 to noon, she will be at central office to meet with central office directors Donna Leap, Barb Boudreaux, Melissa, Melissa Senecal, Pat Conway, uh, Kate Abbott, and Paul DeMarco. And I will be there because I'll be at the high school. I don't know if you know, we have a visit from Bernie Sanders coming to Mount Anthony. So uh, Donna and I are hoping that you will join us for lunch tomorrow at the end of your tour so that I can at least get to see you one more time. So that's, that's okay. okay. Thanks, Jim. So, I mean, if, if you're free and you want to more, spend more time, you're welcome to stop by central office between 11 to noon tomorrow. So we'll be in the conference room, I imagine. So, yeah. uh, is there anything else that needs to be done with the principal hiring no. in, terms, in terms of the board? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I imagine there'll be a contract for you to sign at some point, but that'll be generated in the next few days. Very good. Uh, so that covers our agenda for this evening. So, could, yes, Mary. I would like to request um, an executive session for a personnel issue before we adjourn. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, my understanding of a special meeting is that you can't add anything to the agenda. Not even an executive session. Mm -mm. No. And if we and if we and on a regular meeting, if we're going to add something, we have to. Uh, only because I've been bitten by the open meeting law before <laughs> do I suggest this. Mm -hmm. um, we would have to announce before the meeting, right At in the, the beginning of the meeting, beginning. before the agenda begins, that we want to amend the agenda to add an item. Mm -hmm. And um, There's no leeway for a new board member that didn't know to do that <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> so it's, so because it's, I, I mentioned at the beginning yeah. to... So it's, it's, it's not about leeway to new Special board members. members. It's about following the Vermont Open Meeting Law. And okay. um, so what I would suggest is that when this meeting adjourns, you mm -hmm. bring the item to the attention of the superintendent, okay. and then we, I can advise you okay. on the next step. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I'd like to add something to that. And, and perhaps um, it, you might want to do this on a regular basis, put down uh, an additional meeting, you know, after, uh, or an executive session onto the agenda and and then if and something needed. then you can always scratch it sure that's a great idea thank you so you just have to have the numbers if what our what, what our attorney advises us is you can't have other on a special meeting I and mean, remember what we said right in the beginning I mean, this is a special meeting so that we could do two items by a deadline mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one before you know Edie Dunn accepted a job anywhere else and two <laughs> um, 
<laughs> in time for you to have representatives at the SU meeting. Otherwise, we'd be meeting in your regular scheduled meeting in April. And, and those meetings, which is so that the whole public knows that you meet on the first Wednesday of the month at 7 o'clock. So there's a reasonable expectation that the public knows that that meeting is that night. It plays by a different set of rules than on a special meeting. we got to stick to what's right on the agenda. Yeah. Could you please add uh, executive session to the next meeting? Yeah. Absolutely. And we have to, and why I'm going to have to ask you why, because we have to spell out the reason of what that executive session is. And uh, I will give the chair, uh, in fact, I have a copy right yes, here, a guide yep. to the open meeting law. I mean, let me. Sure. Get to after the yep. meeting to make sure I don't no pull out all the right papers. We have to give, there's like one of seven reasons to specify why we're going into executive session. Mm -hmm. All right. So I would presume that, uh, and if this is false, I apologize, uh, that personnel matters is one of those seven reasons. It's a little, you got to be a little bit more so. specific than personnel mm -hmm. matters. Yeah. Important personnel. <laughs> So yeah, Mary, we'll, we'll make sure yes, that that's And if she tells me something that it's that I deem important enough, we could be having another special meeting okay. for the specific issue. I, I don't. All right. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yes. At the, can we talk about the next meeting? No. Just for <laughs> agenda items. No, you, you have to send that to Chris. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I would suggest you you send it to the chair. Do we have a location for our next? Uh, we meeting? so that, to the new board members, we do rotate mm -hmm. every month where the meeting is. Um, top who? It's who's monument, monument next thinking. month. Yeah. And okay. is it April fifteenth? April fifth. April fifth. April 5th. April 5th. April 5th. First yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. At seven o'clock. Oh, that's why you said April fifteenth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and are we doing six or seven p.m. these days? Seven. Monument. Can, yeah. but you can, can we change it to six? Oh, I that. that would be up to the board. We would, do you we'd have, have to do a hard it the next meeting, though, right? Because we're just, no, no. Well, you, the, it's the chair can want it at any time he wants. I, I, I assume it's, it's a month ahead. Well, half a month ahead. Yeah. It, is yeah, that a hardship for you, Dan? No, I'd in. love to meet at six versus seven. Frankly, six would be yeah, good. because then you don't have to go home and come back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I could just walk from. How home. about anybody else? Chill. Does your work schedule allow you to get back? Six. Um. Yes, but I have to. I think I'd be able to drop my kids off at dance and be able to get here by six. What, I think well, that how about six thirty to start time? Would six that... is fine. I think six will be fine. Sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, Everybody. Does anyone happen to know if George would have any? Um, I doubt George would have a problem with six p.m. Do you? Yes, he. Well, has a problem with board meeting is at three o'clock. Uh, Woodford, which is over by four. So. I need at five on the rest of this. It <laughs> kind of makes it better for you, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Earlier is always better. Yeah. So, so we will go ahead and warn a meeting for 6 p.m. Well, I, I, let me ask, Donna, do you know, is there anything else happening at the school at that point? Play uh, rehearsal will be done by that point. All of right? our after school okay. programming so finishes done. at 4.30. Okay. Most are always gone by okay. 5. Okay. So what, we'll, we'll warn the April 5th meeting for 6 o'clock. Um, okay. And if it seems that that is just not doable for whatever reason, then maybe we'll change it for May. But at least we'll try that 6 o'clock meeting. The, the other thing that we were doing, and I noticed both of you were here tonight, is uh, just the host principal was coming to the meeting, and the other two people, uh, the other two principals were just giving reports. Would you want that to continue? I would say that, that, was, that was by the recommendation of the superintendent that we do that, so that they, principals who are not, it's not their building, they submit a written report. I assume they're all here tonight in support of the new principles. But <laughs> oh, we, also, like to? we also yeah. thought that it would be of assistance to the board if they had any questions from uh, any of the buildings. And also, uh, from, from my vantage point, it allows me to have a fuller context on the district. Sure. Yeah. Um, we spoke a little bit that, um, yes, I think that each meeting certainly gives an opportunity for a principal to highlight things that go on in their school and rotating does that because some of our kids can come and, and actually um, present to the board on different subjects. Um, but I think this is a case now where certainly uh, Dr. Mugis has joined us this year and now Edie will be joining us and um, again all of us attending would give us that opportunity for you to even, if you had questions, to reflect 
we're not opposed to coming to every meeting. Um, I would really, really appreciate it. Me if we too. Could go back to having three principals at the meeting. And of course, there's going to be exceptions where you have a life and there's going to be yeah. things that you need <laughs> yeah. to do. And but we greatly appreciate it that the superintendent will, will, would allow us the, to do that. When I was on the board in the past, um, especially with new principals and slightly new principals, to be able to collaborate and us to have communication directly with you and a window into your building mm -hmm. and also amongst yourselves so that if we have a question for you and you yeah. say I don't do it this way and you have a successful program for us to be able to, yeah. to talk in real time yeah. would be yeah. really really it's not always going to work for your schedules but yeah. if we can do it I would really appreciate it so hypothetically if you were principal of a school I'm very proud that you were just notified by the um, Children's Literacy Fund that your school was is a recipient of a twenty-five thousand dollar grant for next year. Then hypothetically, hypothetically, because none of this is on the agenda. <laughs> We didn't, let, I to say. we didn't let Jackie add any agenda items, but we're continuing to meet. So that's why it's hypothetical. It's all hypothetical. Yeah. Hypothetically, could you, um, you contact the um, VSBA and um, set up a board training for the whole board? I think that's great. Um, yeah. for, uh, so that we can that's a great idea, come Jackie. together as a group. Or a and, don't they call that a retreat? Yes. Yeah. And hypothetically, um, the next. Um, <laughs> The um, fifth grade parents for um, Nature's Classroom and asked that they come to the next board meeting and give a small presentation on how they're doing on, ra on their fundraising. Okay. I think. Uh, Hypothetically. If, if there are any non hypothetical or actual recommendations for agenda <laughs> items for the April meeting, please feel free to email me so we'll get those mm -hmm. on the list in, in a legit way. Um, but I think everything that I heard in this hypothetical manner sounds great. <laughs> um, so, with that said, um, could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? So moved. Thanks. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Please.